Last time we stopped here. Today, briefly, we will go over on strings, diction uh, sorry, list, dictionary, more complex data types, and more complex function. So let's start from the list. List in Python are the, we can say, equivalent of uh, um, arrays uh, and something like that in other programming language. List starts with a square parenthesis, a bracket, and ends with a square parenthesis. List are data type to store multiple items in sequence. And notice that from three, these three examples that this data type could be mixed. So in the first example, we have strings, apples, oranges, and pears. In the second example, we have numbers, one, two, three, four, five. And in the third example, we have a number and a string, and then another number and another string, and go on. Items in a string are, uh, sorry, in a list, are separated by a comma, always. The other data structure, a little bit more sophisticated that we, so today, we see today, is the dictionary. Dictionary stores a couple of elements. A dictionary starts with um, the braces, a brace, and end with a brace. And uh, it stores a couple of elements. The first of this couple of elements is the key. The key of the dictionary is immutable. You cannot change the key once inserted in a dictionary. Typically, is a string, it's not mandatory. And the other thing in this item is the value. So a dictionary store multiple items in the format a key with some values associated, and they are not accessed in sequence. That is, while the list, while the list, uh, the first element of a list has index equal to zero, the second element of the list has index equal to one, and, and so on. In a dictionary, you access element by its keys. So if you want to retrieve this couple, you have to look for the snake key and not for the key number two, because here you don't, the key number one, because here you don't have an index. So you, you can also see that this couple could be composed by a string and numbers, but also from string and string, mixed data type as before. We briefly see, so um, the for loop, in Python we have also the while loop. So this is an example of the while loop. You have to define for the while loop, as you know, a, a variable outside of the loop. And then this is the structure of a while loop. There is the while keyword, there is the element to be evaluated, there is the column, then the line stops, new line, indentation, four spaces, and the instruction here, the, we can say the body of the loop. So this loop, what it does? It's put one in the variable, doctor, and say while the doctor is minor or equal to 13, call the function exterminate and pass the number of the doctor. When this doctor is killed, then increase number of one and go on up to 13 included. We just see last time, just to, to recap, the for loop for strings, this instruction uh, will give you, will for each char in the hello string, print the single char. And I told you that this is the only for loop available in Python. You don't have the equivalent of for e equal to zero, e i minor of 10, I plus plus. This is the only structure you have for something in something else. To have, um, to count, to perform operation like for a number starting from zero up to a number that is 10, 15, whatever, you have to use the range function. The range function define a range of number between a starting number, in this case zero, and an end number, in this case five. So we can, in this case, we can say for a number in this range between zero and five, print the number. Question. 
what will print this uh, for loop? It will print zero at the first step, yes, no. It will print zero at the first step of the loop. Yes, maybe not. We need to go on, over, because how many of you say yes? It will print zero. OK. How many of you say no? OK, and the other hand undecided, and uh, OK. It will print zero. Yes, it will print zero. Then it will print one, two, three, and the same question. It will print five or not? No. In the range, the first number is always included, and the last number is always excluded. So it will print zero, one, two, three, four. It's like the minor five, not minor equal, only minor. Range allow you to define the step to perform this range. So in this case, we can say for number in the range that start from zero, go up to 25, with 25 excluded, by step of five. So in this case, it will print zero, five, 10, 15, and 20. Without this third parameter, it will print by step of one. In this case, you can personalize the step. How many number you can skip? In this case, five. Back to the list. We can use for loop for printing the single element of a list. We have this list, like before, fruits, that is composed by three fruits, apple, oranges, and pears. And we say for each variable fruit, single fruit, in the list, print, I love the fruit. So this will print, as we see before, the first time I love apples, the second time I love oranges, and the third time I love pears. For dictionaries, the for loop is a little bit more complex. Not the for per se, but how we write things. Because, because while in the list we have items, single items, accessed by index. This is item index zero, this is number one, this is number two. Here we don't have this. We have a couple of, of elements with a key and a value. So if you want to print both the key and the value, in a sentence like, uh, in this case, uh, the animal has number of legs. We should use this uh, structure. So the for is always the same. For something in something else, colon, new line, and so on. We need to say, first of all, we want uh, all the items in the dictionary. So these items is a method, is a function, that exists only for dictionaries. You cannot have a list dot items. These items will give you the couple, key plus value, key plus value, key plus value. You can have only the keys if you want with the keys method and only the values if you want. Items takes both of them. And then since here we have two values, the key and the value, we need to put it into different variables because they change, both of them change. So we, can, we have to create a tuple here and put two variables. The first one will represent the key and the second one will represent the value. So this operation will put the first key here at the first round and the first value here. Then at the second round, we put the key here and the value here and so on. And then we can use the, the format function that we see, we saw last time with string, that say print the first element as second element legs. So this print animals will print hand, hunt as six legs, snake as zero legs, and co as four legs. We can also print an entire list in there, we can say a raw representation. In this way, we have a list that is to buy, that is composed by eggs and milk, for example. And then we can say print the entire list to buy. 
it will give you this format. Square parentheses, because it's a list, with strings separated by comma, because this list contains strings. We can also print single element of a list, and we, we, can, we can access to these single elements by indexes, like we did for strings and charters. So in this case, to buy of zero, we'll print x, because x is the, the element at index zero. We can also modify a, a list by index. We, we saw last time that we cannot modify a charter inside a string because strings are immutable, but we can modify a list in this way. So for example, here I have the same list. I will print the first element that is hex, and then we say, no, I don't want eggs anymore. I want to buy butter instead of eggs. So it can replace the element at position zero with this other value. So we'll put at the position zero of the list here, the butter element. So if I print to buy of zero this time, I will see butter. If I print here, after here, the entire list, I will saw butter, comma, milk. I can also add something to a list, obviously. For example, with the append method. The append method, again, is specific for list. And you see, because here we have a list. And allow you to add at the end of the list something. One value. So in this case, if I will print after this operation, the entire list, I will, saw, I will see eggs, milk, and chocolate, because I add, I append to the original list the chocolate element. I can also append more than one item with the extend method. The extend method takes a list and extend the first list with another new list. So while the append will add only chocolate here, if I want to add another list with two, three, four, 100 elements, I can use the extend method. With the extend method, I have the to buy list that now here at this position is composed by eggs, milk, and chocolate, and extend this list of three elements with other two. And so we have a resulting list of five elements. We can also extend a list with the same operator that we saw for string, with the concatenation operator. We can perform, we can say, an addition of two lists. We can concatenate a list with another list, like for string. This is the equivalent of the extend method, we can say. We add a list and we concatenate the second list to the one with the plus operator. We can also print or act on a sub, a sub list, we can say. So let's say that we, I want to print the element number one and the element number two. I can write in this way, print the list in square parentheses, the index, starting index, colon, the end index. This will consider the element with index number one, the element with index number two, and then we stop excluding the element number three. This operator is called slice, and this operation is called slicing. It will allow you to cut a portion of a list. In this way, we'll cut the list starting from the index one, including index number two, and excluding index number three, and don't considering anything else in the list. You can also use the slice operator in this way, here, without a number before or after the, um, the colon. In this case, this operation will create a copy, a full copy of the list, and we'll put it on the remember variable. You can also use, um, for example, here, if you skip the number at the beginning, by, you can put a number at the end or vice versa. If you want to, for example, copy, copy or print a list from index number three up to the end of the list, no matter how long it is, or vice versa, if you want to start from the beginning and you don't want to write zero up to a certain index. 
you can use the slice operator to perform this operation. And the slice operator works with strings too. You can slice a string as well by counting its charter. So you can consider only the charter from one up to three, for example, of a string with the same operator. Equival in an equivalent way, you can also remove items from a, st from a list and you have two ways to remove this item from the list. The first one is pop. The pop method that again is particularly specific for a list allows you to remove the last element of the, street, of the list. So in this case, uh, this pop operation will delete this cheese. If I apply again, we'll remove the last but one and so on. Or you can specify an index inside the pop method so that you can remove the element at index number given, in this case, number one. The remove operator instead doesn't consider the index, but wants the value stored in the list. So while the pop element, the pop methods without any parameter, we remove the last element of the list or without a number that identify the index, we remove the element of those at that index. The remove methods, we remove the, uh, the element whose content is equal to the one put here. So in this case, remove cheese, we remove this element, no matter that this is the last one, the first one in the middle of the list. Similarly, remove milk, we look for an element that is called milk, that is equivalent to milk, and we'll remove that string. You can also delete and please, there is an error here. Please catch the error while, while I'm speaking. Um, you can also delete a portion of a list. Here I say with this del keyword, delete, delete everything in the to buy list that start from the index two and end to index six. So here we have only index number one and index number two. So the list, if I print to buy here, the to buy list will include eggs and milk only. It doesn't include anything from index number two up to the end of the list. So there is an error here, more or less voluntary. What is the error? Yes, in English. The last index. It works because if it doesn't check, you can also put here 11 it go out to the end of the list, and then if the number is greater than the end of the list, it stop uh, deleting and uh, give you the entire list. Uh, just a note, we say a string, as you know, is a, we can say that is a sequence of characters, and we saw that uh, a list is a sequence of elements so we can wrongly say that a string is a, and the list are the same things, obviously not. While a string is a sequence of charter, a list of charters is not a string. First of all, for one reason, that we don't have the char object in, uh, in Python. We all only have string. So in reality, a list of charter is a list of string with length equals to one. But we can convert a list in a string and vice versa. How with this function here? Last time I told you that there are a str function that takes, for example, a number and convert it in a string, the int function that convert a string in the in equivalent integer number. And here we have this list function that build a list starting from a string. So in this case, if we go, if we put here Python inside this method, the, this function, sorry, the outcome will be, for example, list of Python. It will give you a list. It will split 
each character and we'll put it in an index of the list. So we have a list that contains each single charter of the word that you give to the function. Strings also have a way to split words inside the sentences. This method that again is specific for string here will take the content of a string, hopefully a sentence, and will split the single word of the sentence and put the single word in a list. It will split by default on spaces. So the result of this operation is a list that contains this as first element, is as second element, MEI as third element. You can specify here the string, the element to, uh, on which the method should be splitting. So for example, if this is a this is MEI comma something like that, if you want to split not by spaces, but according to the comma, you can put here single or double quotes, comma, close quotes. And it will split not on spaces, but on comma, for example, or any other charter that you want to recognize, to split upon. So, again a list. Let's read this one. I have a list that is the same as before, that is fruits, and in this list I have two strings. One is apple and one is orange. And then I create a new variable that is favorite fruits and I put it equal to fruits. Then I want to add a fruit to the original list. So I act on the original fruits list and I add this other fruit. Then I will print the fruits now are, and I would like to print uh, the first list, this one, that should, uh, in my intention, contain apple, orange, and banana. And then I would like to print my favorite fruits are the second list, that in my intention should contain only apple and orange. If I execute this, the output is this one. Both lines print the same list even if I act only on this, on fruits, and not on favorite fruits. So the question is why? Yeah. Yes. Could you explain maybe for someone that doesn't know what is addressed by reference? It's, it's correct, <laughs> yeah, it's right. <laughs> I will repeat for the purpose of the, the registration. Um, your colleagues say that uh, um, if you want to create, a, uh, to maintain separate this list, tell me if I wrong interpreted, uh, you have to instantiate separately this two list and then perform a copy of these uh, two list separately. And this here the problem is that we don't do what? Not the initialization, because the initialization here we perform in some way. But the, it is not the sterilization, is the, no, the, you said we have to initialize separately and then we need to copy both of them separately. So here we are missing the, the copy. Yeah, because this one is not a copy of the entire list, but is a, a, an assignment of one variable in another variable. Because yeah, we don't make a copy, a real copy of the list, but only make a copy of the reference to the list. So I would like to show you graphically this for not computer science people, and maybe also for computer science people. I don't need to work. With this website, that is not this.
this one. This one allows you to visualize what happens maybe when you write code in various programming language, in Python, in Java, in JavaScript, in Ruby, in C and C++ in an experimental way. So let's stick to Python because this is what we want to do. And so we created a fruit like before, equal, and we say, for example, apple and orange, and then we can say favorite fruits and say equal to fruit. That is like I perform, and then we can print uh, fruits, and uh, yeah, yes, that's, uh, that's it. I can then visualize the execution, and it will allow me to to perform a step-by-step -step analysis of what happens. So first step, I declare fruits equal apple and orange. So what happens in a graphical way is this one. I have here my fruits list that has a narrow to another part, we can say of the memory in, com in the computer, that store the real list. Then if we go on, you see that favorite fruits has another arrow that go exactly in the same position as before. So if we edit fruits, we will edit this one, the content here. So these favorite fruits will continue to have the content of the first list. Let's edit code. Let's check. Yeah. Yes. You are declaring a pointer to the beginning of the list. Yeah. Um. Let's go to the last step. No, it's better first. So again, first step, we have the original list with the pointer to the effective list. Then next step, I create favorites fruits with a pointer that give us a pointer that go there again. And then if I edit the first list here, I append two fruits not to favorite fruits, you see that Python had here the other fruit, but both of them point here. So we don't have two separate lists. We have only one list that is called by two different variables, we can say. So how we can, this website, uh, if you want, is pythontutor.com if you want to to try it uh, at home or whatever. So this is what happens, I already show you. So if we want to copy list, we have uh, at least three different options. The first option is slicing. We can, I told you that slice, the slice operator will allow you to perform a copy of the list uh, in the sense that it's a real copy, a deep copy of the list. This one, is ho this one here is all also call, uh, called a shallow copy of the list because it's not a strong copy, it's not a deep copy, it's not a copy every single element of the list. It copy only the reference to the list. The slicing is the first option you have to perform a deep copy, a real copy of every element of the list. This will create uh, another of these yellow block it will duplicate also this one. 
The second option that is slicing of the entire list, obviously, because we want to perform a full copy of the list. You can also indicate here the numbers, starting and ending uh, indexes of the list. You can also use the list function to create a new list. If at the, to the list function you pass the fruit list, it will give you a full copy of this list. This is the preferred method in Python to perform a copy. The first one is okay, this is best. And then the third option is extend an empty list. So I will create an empty list that is favorite fruit and it will extend with the content of the other list. So I will extend an empty list, but the empty list is already done, separate, so we'll copy the content, each item of the content. So let's see that it's true in, uh, in this Python tutor. For example, that is already written, edit code. For example, I can say that favorites fruits, uh, uh, sorry, not one, not here. Here we can say that fruits uh, dot append. Here, instead of say equals, we can say list of fruits. If I visualize the execution, first step, like before, second step, you see that we have two arrows now that go to two separate list, yellow things in the, in the slide. And so if we add something to the first one, we see that for real, we are adding the element only to the first one and not the second one. That is what we wanted. Then, like the other time, there are many other operations with list, and there are the Python documentation on the internet. So if you are curious about other operation of list, or you needed other operation of list behind this basic operation, please have a look of the Python documentation as, we show, as I show you last time. So let's move to the dictionary. If I want to print a dictionary, like a list before, I can say print the entire dictionary with the name of the dictionary. And it happens what we are expected. It prints a braces, the key, that is a string in this case, and we see that is a string because of the single quote, colon, like here, and the value, again, and then the second, um, the second item, and so on. If I want to modify a dictionary, for example, I would like to add the, the key spider, which 273 legs, uh, I can do it in this way. So in this way, that is similar to what we did for a list. But instead of saying here a number, we say here the key. So legs of the key spider is not present here. So we'll add a new couple that has a key spider and value this value here. It will create, will add to our dictionary spider as 273 legs. So maybe 273 legs is a little bit uh, too much for a spider. And maybe we can go back to eight, that is more normal. So we can perform this operation. We can also edit a element inside the dictionary in the same way in which we add the element. So we can say that the dictionary Square parentheses, number of the name of the key that we want to edit or to add, like before, equal its value. In this case, spider is already pr present in the dictionary, so we can replace the previous value. Similarly to before, we can also delete specific elements. So if I don't like spiders, for, for example, I can say del, like before, the element to remove. Which element in the dictionary? How 
by saying that, that, that we want to remove uh, from the dictionary legs the element that has key spider. So del spider from legs. If I print here the legs dictionary, I will have only ant six and snake zero. It will remove the key spider and its value. If I want to clear everything to empty the dictionary, the dictionary has a method that again are specific for dictionaries that is clear. The clear will remove everything in the dictionary, no matter how long is the dictionary, how many items are present in the dictionary. So we saw how to delete, how to add, let's see how to get a value from a dictionary. So again, we have our dictionary of legs of animals. I want to get ant, ant, the number of legs of, we can say legs of the ant. So I can do this in this way. The name of the dictionary, brackets, ant, that is the key. And if I print this, it will give me six. Let's check. And then you can say legs of ant, ant. It will print six because the value associated to the key ant is six. It's okay. Good. Now, what happens if I try to say, please give me the value associated to spider here. What will happen? First option, it give me errors. Second option, it give me zero, none, an, a value. Third option, window explode, I don't know. What happens? Error. How many of you say that you may give me an error? This time is better. Yes, it will give me an error. The key error, the key is not present in the dictionary. So we can add a key and a value from a dictionary in a dictionary, but we cannot extract information from a key in a dictionary because the key is not present. It doesn't find the key. Here, we also only have ant snake. We don't have spider. So it cannot give me a number associated to spider. We don't have. So how to, again, overcome this problem? We can, for example, check if spider is present in the dictionary before performing this operation, like spider. So that, so that we can check, is spider present? Yes. Please print legs of spider. If leg, if spider does don't present in the dictionary, yes, it's not present. So skip, don't print anything, go on with your uh, operation. Then there is a way to skip the check and try to get uh, again, try to get the uh, value from uh, the dictionary. That is the get method dictionary.get a key. This method, if the um, key is present, will give you the number, the value associated to this key, like before. If it's not present, it gives you a special uh, object that is none. So legs.get um, snake will give you zero. Legs.get spider will give you none. If you want, you can also personalize the value that this method will give you. In this way, by adding a parameter here that will tell you what the operation will give you if the value is, will be not present. So this one here, if we say legs.get spider, 
and spider is not present will give you a string that will contain not present or you can say for example here put minus one if you want to remain the number domain because no animal has minus one legs so it's a negative number that is it's okay in this collection so let's move away from data structure and loops and we speak about function we see we call several times function print is a function and we call it we I, I imagine an exterminate function in the while loop and so on but you can also obviously define function function in python are defined with the def keyword separate by the name of the fun space space then the name of the, the function parenthesis in the parenthesis optional parameter separated by commas then like in many other uh, structure colon new line indentation for spaces the body of the function the function must be defined before its actual usage so here we can define a function that is called say hello that will only perform one operation that is print hello and then sometimes after outside the body of the function we can call it this function with in this way say hello and the output of this it will be the printing on the console of the hello string so the first one is the definition and the second one is the call of the function in your program you can also as you imagine pass parameter to function so this is another example def say hello to name this parameter will go here and in calling say hello to mei students it will print hello mei students because this parameter will be put in the name uh, parameter and uh, that is it is name variable here you can also have default parameter values so this is the same function as before the difference that this parameter name is equal to something so we here we have two use case the, the second one this one is identical to before we pass a parameter students that will be will put in this name variable that will be printed here hello student the first the first uh, the other case this one is i call the, the function without any parameter so without any parameter this function will give you an error because you don't have this name here name you don't pass name to the function so it will use the default parameter so in, the, in this first case it will print hello mei in the second case it will print hello students you can have multiple parameters here each one can have or don't have a default parameter value so you can have a first variable one without any default parameter and then a second parameter that is name with the value equal to mei you can yeah you can use uh, um, you can use here you can say input of uh, a variable of a question the result of the input will go in a variable let's say name and then name you can put here name so that will go here like before you can also return a value from a function with the return keyword so in this case it will return hello plus a name we want you don't want to print inside the function we want to print outside so we call it this build greetings function that will return plus the name with a default parameter and then we can print the greetings or we can do whatever we want with the greetings and a function can also return multiple values with tuples so in this case we will in this case before we return a string that is hello concatenated with a name another variable 
So in this case, we return hello MEI. Here, we don't return a string. We return a tuple with two strings. The first one is hello, and the second one is name. Then here, when we call the function, we add only one var variables. Here, we need two variables, one for each returning element. So this, va this function will return these two va values, and in the same order as they are present here, they will be put in these two variables. So the first variable will have hello, and the second variable we have name inside. And then we can print, we can perform any operation with these two variables separately. In this case, we can say greetings, that is hello, plus two, plus the name of the person, that by default are MEI. This operation here is also called unpacking, because you have a pack of something and perform an unpack of these variables in more than one item. A function can be also documented with uh, doc strings that are multiple line comments, single, triple quote, triple single quote, sorry, after the definition of the, of after the first line of the definition of a function. So def build greetings, colon, the doc string. This is the documentation of that specific function, and after the string, the real body of the function. Then in Python, we have modules. Up to now, we imagine to have one file that we start filling from the first line and we stop filling on the 100 lines with everything inside. But we can also separate, organize logically our program, our code. Modules are one way, the way in Python, to logically organize code. They are files consisting of Python code, like the one that you can create. They can define, implement, function, variables, etc. And typically, a module is contained in a file that is called in the same identical way. So for example, the math module is stored in a file called math.py. There is this strong equivalence between the name of the module and the name of the file that stored the entire code of the module. And we have several ways to import a module inside our program. The first one is this. This import the module named math inside our program so that we can access to every variable, every function defined inside that module. How we access to this variable? In this way, name of the module dot name of the variable or the function, whatever, defined inside the module. So here, this pi is the number as a variable defined in the math module. He, we can have a pi equal something variable, but he, here we use that one, because we have math.py. We access to the pi variable inside the math module. And this is print, open parenthesis, close parenthesis. I didn't, I didn't fix it from Python 2. Another way is import something specific from a module. In the first case, we we can say, have access to everything that is defined in the math module. In the second case here, in the green one, we only import the pi variable from math. Only that. Math has millions of other function and variables. We only want that one. We only see, we only can use that one in this way. And how we use it? simply by calling it print pi. 
and this pi is this one. If we redefine here a pi equals something variable, we override that function defined in math with our version. So we lose the import, we can say, logically. The third method, that is that the red one, that is, is from math, from the model math, import asterisk, that is import everything. So that this one will put inside as the effect, we can say, to putting every variable, every function of the module inside your program. So if the modules define a pi variables, you have a pi variable. If the modules define a sin function, you have a sin function like you define this one. This third method is don't use this because you access everything from a module and you don't know from every module you don't know what will be over, overwritten from this in your code and what we, you will overwrite, yeah. The first uh, here, the first import, uh, we can say, you can call it a reference to math, and then you can access every variable, every function of math in this way, math.py. In this case, uh, you import, uh, the content, we say, is like more, you made a copy and paste of all the math code inside your program, in this other case. The, the effect, at the end, you have the pi variable here, and you have the pi variable here, you have uh, the sim function defined in math here, and you can have also the, the, the sim function defined here, is the way in which is available in your, uh, your program. Here, you use explicit the math.py, and you can define the pi variable if you want. You can define the sin function, for example, and you can use, uh, in the same way, contemporary, the mat.sin function, because there is this mat dot behind. In this case, uh, it's more like, again, you copy and paste everything from mat and put it in your code. So uh, equivalent, the, the final result is the same. In, in this case, you don't override anything. You decide when to use your function and your variable, and when to use the function and the variable as declared in math. Okay. Then you can also get some information from the command line. To do this, you import something. You import, um, math is a, um, a module that is available in Python. You don't have to install anything else, it's already included. A another of these module is sys. Sys has a series of function and variable that perform operation on your operating system. So from sys, import argv. Argv is the same argv you should know from C and something like that. That, I, that is everything you type on the, the command prompt on Windows, on the terminal, on Linux, on command line. This argv contains a series of uh, variables, a series of uh, elements. The first one is always the name of the program, you call it. The second one is the first parameter, the third one is the third parameter, and so on. If you have no parameter, this argv will contain only the script value, the name of the program. So this, uh, if I type in a prompt on a terminal, Python, the name of my Python program, space, for example, one, and I run this code, it prints, the script is called my script, because prints the script that is taken here with the unpacking operation from the first parameter of this argv. Then it prints the parameter is first, that is the second element that is unpacked from the argv, that in this case is this one. 
So we'll print the script is called myscript.py and the parameter is one because I typed myscript.py and one. This is unpacking. And how to, so if you work here, it's easy. We can say, for example, that I type Python, my program dot pi and then first uh, first uh, param second uh, and so on you can get this as the first element of argv this as second element of argv and this as the third element of argv if you want to do this in pycharm that is what you should do on Monday in La Dispe. So let's open briefly PyCharm. You can do this in PyCharm, obviously. So we can, for example, create a new project Uh, in creating a new project, I, I saw this uh, and I repeated this several times in LADISPE. Please check, uh, especially on, on Linux uh, system, to select uh, the Python interpreter 3. Dot something, hmm? not the version 2. On LADISPE computer, the default is Python 2. So please, in creating a new project, select uh, the right version of Python to use. Here we have only this one, so it's easy. I can create this, maybe. Okay, then I can create uh, like the other time. Uh, a new Python file that I can call it uh, first. Then I can, for example, copy and paste this one, this example, just to check. And if I run this, it will give me error, because why? It's a not enough value to unpack. Expected to go to one, because this argv is expected script and first to unpack Python. It's expecting to unpack for argv script and first. And instead, I only give it the script, the first value. So how we can put the second? We can go here in run, edit configuration. And here, where I see the name of my program, I can put the parameters. So for example, I can put one like before here, and then I can press okay, and again run, and it gives me no error, and say the script is called my path on disk and then first.py, and the parameter is one. The parameter that I added from edit configuration. So on Monday on, in LADISPE, you will require to perform some exercise. One of these will ask you for, uh, for um, passing a parameter from command line. Remind, run, mate, run menu, edit configurations, and then in the script parameter lines, add your parameter. If they are more than one, split with a space. So one, space, two, space, th three, and so on. We can also read and write files in Python. For example, here, I get the file name as the first parameter, sorry, the second parameter from the command line. So the parameter with index number one, if we start counting from zero, and I pa put this parameter in this variable that is called file name. Then with the function open, I can open the file path 
read from the command line. This open operation will open in read mode the file and will put a reference, we can say, to that file, to that document in our on our computer in this txt, txt variable. So then I can, for example, print the name of the file that I opened, and I can also read all the content of this file, especially if this file is of text file, so that I can effectively read and understand what is written inside with the read method. So txt.read, again, is a function that is specific for uh, files and will give you all the content at one time, all the content of the file, the text file. With print, you print on screen all the content of the file. Yeah, show the file content. You can also write files. How? In this way, performing two operations. The first one is open. You open the file. In this case, you give a parameter that is the W because you do, we want to open the file in write mode. You don't want to read. You want to write the, uh, something in this file. Then, and we have, a, we can say a reference to this file in this target function, the variable. Then to write a string into the file, we can use the write method. Before we are using the read, and now we write with the write method and we can pass the string to write. This method will write this, this content inside the file on your disk. And then after performing all the writing operation, you need to close the file so that the file is free to be used from other person, other programs. Please notice two things. The first one is that the W writes the, uh, open the, fry, the file in write mode and empty the file. So it opened the file, it allows you to write inside it, and in the same time, it clear all the content on the file. You cannot add something to an existing file with the W parameter. There is a parameter in Python to pass to the open function that is A, append open a file in append mode, we'll open a file in a write mode so that you can append everything, whatever you want to that file. Write empties the files. And then also notice that you cannot perform a read and a write on the same um, target variable. You, if you want to write and then read, you have to open the file in write mode, write something, close the file and open again the file in read mode. And then read the file and close the file. It's not allowed to read a file open in read before closing it. So we can stop here. There are uh, some references in the slide for Python 3. This will disclose the basics of Python. Uh, on Monday, you will have uh, one hour and a half in Ladispe to experiment with this and then lecture uh, here with Professor Corman. Uh, have a good night. If you have any question, I'm still here. Thanks. <laughs>